Hi and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a master effect or an effects bus in waveform. There's a certain way to do this. It's not difficult once you see the tricks and it uses the flexible mixer section over on the right. We can also work with the console view if we'd like with this as well. To get started, we need to choose an effect and I'm going to start by loading an effect on the snare of this track. This song is a demo song that's part of the template when you create a song using the singer-songwriter. I've deleted a lot of the extra tracks and simplified the project, but that's where these tracks come from. Now I'm gonna start by putting in an effect in the conventional way of just doing an insert on the track. So I'll open the browser, type in reverb, and a lot of my different reverb plugins appear here, but what I'm gonna do is pull in the T Reverberate plugin which is from the DAW Essentials from Traction. So just grab this and we'll put it on the snare track and I'll solo the snare track and we'll just play a little bit of this and see if we can come up with some kind of a snare sound. So I dialed in a basic snare sound. Now what I want to do is then put this into a master effect so that I could apply it to other instruments or other drum sounds at the same time. Now to do this in waveform, all we do is set up a track. To add a track, just hit the letter T, which is the shortcut. There's other ways to add tracks, but that's the easiest. I'm going to rename this track, call it verb number one. I typically like to make these yellow, not sure why, but sort of this yellow or orange color to set it off a little bit. Now, if we look at that in the mixer, I'll just press M to pull up the mixer, and you can see that here is my reverb over here. So at the same time we put in this track, we're adding a channel for it in our mixer. Next, I'm gonna take the reverb and put it on this track. So now I have my reverb set up. Now to get the sound to it, I need to create a reverb send and return pair. If I go back to my search, I could type aux send or aux return, but you'll see that they actually appear at the top of the list. These are standard plugins. So we're gonna take this aux send and put this on our snare drum sound. Now the place we wanna put it is actually after the volume control. So after this pan and volume, I'll explain the reason for that in a minute. Then we want to take the aux return and put it right here before the reverb. So in waveform style, your signal flows kind of in an arrow pointing right through this mixer. So when it comes and hits this aux send, then we've got this thing right here. It will send that, we mix this amount, and it will send it to this return. Now there is a busing system behind the scenes where you can have quite a few of these aux channels. If I click on this you'll see that we have assigned this to bus 1 by default because it's the first one we did, but we could assign it to other buses. We also could give this bus a name, maybe call it reverb, but for right now I'll leave it like this. Now one other thing, when you put your effect on a master bus like this, you're mixing it by how much you send to it from the original channel. Therefore, you want to turn the mix all the way up. You want 100% of the wet signal as a master effect. All right, so I'm going to play this song back, and then we will listen to the snare and see if we've got the reverb on it. Now watch what happens when I solo the snare. When I solo the snare, it's completely dry. So that's the last little piece of setting up one of these master effects. And you need to set solo isolate on this track right here. So we right click where it says solo, turn on solo isolate. What this means is that when you solo anything else, 
this will automatically solo along with it. So now watch what happens. So that works as you'd like. You'd want to hear that snare with its effects when you solo it. That is also very helpful as you're kind of dialing in the effect sound or the amount of the effect that you want to add there. Now, what if we want to add that also to the hi-hat? Well, it's quite simple. We just drag this to make a copy of it. I'm going to drag it by holding down Command as I drag it. That would be Control on a PC. And now I have another one here. We can also drag it and put one on our guitar. So now we can mix with this effect. I'll start by turning it down. So there we have the complete setup with the aux sends, the aux returns, and the solo isolate. Now one question you might have is why do I have to go through all this work every time I want to add a master reverb effect? And the answer is you don't really have to do it every time because you could easily save this whole setup. The way you do that is to go to the reverb track and go over at the track header and do save preset. And here you can save the track plugins and outputs and we could give it a name i'm adding the tag master effect so it's easier to find this later so the next time i want to create one of these i could just search for master effects and open presets and here is my preset you just take this drag it to your project drop it in and now say we want to do one that's an echo we just replace this plugin with an echo. The traction tape delay. We'll choose a preset. In this one it doesn't have a mix knob so I just make sure I turn the dry all the way off. Set up my delay parameters and I should be ready to go with this one. Now instead we want this set to aux return 2 so we apply it to bus 2 and the same thing is if I want to now add this also to say my snare drum I'll just duplicate this send with D, and then on the second one, I'll set that to bus two. So I'm sending now to aux two from that. We'll check and make sure that solo isolate is on. Also need to remember to name the track. And it's also a good idea to save this as a preset so that we can easily set this up next time as well. Also make sure to put in master effects or whatever tag you choose and we'll save that as well. So there's also a little lead guitar part here. Let's try to add a little bit of this echo to that part. To do that, I'll take the aux send to, command drag it to this track. We'll solo it and then see if we can add a little of that. Now, we've got it all set up. If you're coming from a different digital audio workstation, you might want to work with this sort of thing in the console view. Press M to open and close the console view. The other way would be to go up to this I, and you can open and close the console with this right here. It looks like a mixer. Turns on and off that panel. But you can see that we've got a very conventional looking mixer at this point where we can adjust these levels. And then during playback, we can also manage the effects.
as I was playing back, you could see I can mute the effects channels. I can manipulate the sends. I can solo all the soloings working properly. Just make sure you've got your effects channels in solo isolate mode so they follow along when you solo other things. So a little while ago, when I first inserted the aux send, I said we want to put these right after the volume and pan plugin. And why is it that we want to put it there? This is typical for any kind of mixer, or any kind of DAW. You put your sends for your effects post fader. And the reason is so you send less signal into it as you're manipulating that fader, you're proportionally sending less effect. I'm going to show you on the snare here. I'm going to solo the snare and I'm going to turn this fader down and you'll see that I lose the effect as it goes down. Now if I put these things, these sends, before the fader, you'll see what happens when I want to turn that track down. So basically what is happening is we're still sending to the reverb so we'll still get that ghost sound of the reverb if we put them in the wrong place. And a final point is that you can rename these if you like. You can rename the bus. So if we want to call this bus also verb one, for example, you'll see that it, it appears here with an S for send. If we want to rename the second one to echo one or something like that, then we'll see that there as well. Close the mixer for a second. Back over on the track, you'll actually see the R and the verb one and R and echo one on the return plugins. They'll also appear on the mixer as well. You can see them right here. So that's how you set up and use master effects in waveform. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video very soon.